Welcome to episode 261 of Angela Watson's Truth for Teachers. I'm your host, Angela Watson, and I'm here to speak encouragement into the hearts of educators and get you informed and energized for the week ahead. Today, I'm talking about the Swiss cheese model of solving complex problems and how you can use it to tackle big issues that are holding back progress in your school. Visit truthforteachers.com to get an easy to read, easy to share version of this podcast episode. I have been able to learn so much about productivity. I feel that my workload is more manageable. I was actually able to move from making my copies on a day-to-day basis to having things for the entire next week ahead of time, sometimes even two weeks out. Knowing what boundaries I can set and also knowing when it's okay to work and when it's okay not to work and just take that time for me. What you just heard were teachers talking about the impact of my 40-hour teacher work week. If you want support with this, remember that our Fast Track program is open to new members all year long, along with our 40-hour instructional coaching and 40-hour leadership program for administrators. If you want to learn how to create a sustainable approach to the job that you love, go to 40HTW.com to learn more. Today's episode is going to be short and sweet, despite the depth and complexity of the topic at hand. And I think you'll find that that falls right in alignment with what I'm describing here. The Swiss cheese model was created by James T. Reason. It is used in risk management, in aviation safety, in engineering, in healthcare, computer security, and more. And I think there's a real place for it in K-12 education as well. Here's what Wikipedia has to say. The Swiss cheese model likens human systems to multiple slices of Swiss cheese, stacked side by side, in which the risk of a threat becoming a reality is mitigated by the differing layers and types of defenses that are layered behind each other. Therefore, in theory, lapses and weaknesses in one defense do not allow a risk to materialize since other defenses also exist and prevents a single point of failure. Now, if you're not familiar with Swiss cheese itself, it is a cheese that typically has holes in it. There are apparently fewer holes in the cheese than there traditionally used to be. That was one of the interesting facts that I uncovered while researching this. It has to do with changes in production and milk quality. But during the aging process of Swiss cheese, which is officially called Emmentaler after the region of Switzerland in which it was first developed, the bacteria give off carbon dioxide, which forms bubbles, also known as eyes or most commonly holes. The holes are highly noticeable if you slice a block of Swiss cheese, especially when it's sliced thinly. And that's what I want you to envision here, a thin slice of yellowish white cheese that has holes in it. If you want complete coverage of your bread in a sandwich, one slice of Swiss cheese is not going to be enough, right? There might be five holes in the cheese and those bites of sandwich would be cheeseless. So you'd add another slice on top. Because the holes are not in the same place on every slice of cheese, layering another slice on top means that some of the first slice's holes are now covered by the second slice. And some of the holes in the second slice are covered by the first holes. If you want a really nice thick layer of cheese in your sandwich, you may want to add a third slice. So it's likely that all the holes are covered with at least one layer of cheese. Can you see how this works as a metaphor for mitigating risk and solving complex problems? In the Swiss cheese model, your school's defenses against failure are these imperfect barriers. They're like slices of cheese that have holes in them. When you're trying to overcome systemic poverty, under-resourced communities in schools, staff shortages, pandemic fallout, a lag in academic or socio-emotional development in students, where we're talking about huge issues that no one single thing will solve. It's far too easy to oversimplify an issue, to try to boil it down to, well, the government needs to do this, or the superintendent needs to do this, or parents should be doing this. The truth is that these big endemic problems that have existed for a very long time are not going to be solved by one singular thing. We cannot look to one person or one group of people or one entity for the solution to all of our problems. The most comprehensive and long-term solutions tend to be multifaceted. They tackle the problem from multiple angles. And that's how I want to encourage you to face the issues that you're struggling with right now in your classroom or school, or even personal life and community. 
I think it's a good approach to nationwide and worldwide problems, too. Anything that seems too big to solve, any issue that seems like it's just too hard to fix. Let me give you an example that you can probably relate to. Let's say that you have students in your class who are largely disengaged, distracted, unfocused, not turning in high-quality work on time. We can blame the kids or their families or the district's expectations or society at large for this. In truth, there's probably no one cause and therefore no one solution. So what if we stopped oversimplifying and grappled with the true complexity and intersectionality of problems? What if we used the Swiss cheese model? If you have an upcoming project that students need to turn in and you're worried that they're not keeping up with the workload, you can provide many deadlines. This Tuesday, topics are due. This Friday, first drafts are due. Consider those many deadlines a layer of Swiss cheese. You've done one thing, one very imperfect thing, one thing that clearly has holes in it and isn't going to cover every single student. But it is one layer of defense against the problem of students not being able to turn in their work on time. Then look for another layer of Swiss cheese to lay on top. Maybe you have students text their families or their parents with due date so the parents are kept in the loop and they can stay on top of things. Again, this is an imperfect barrier against the problem. Some kids won't do it, some parents won't check in, but you've added another layer. It will help some kids, especially since this layer goes on top of that first one with the mini deadlines. Make your layers of Swiss cheese as impenetrable as possible. You might teach kids how to set reminders on their phone the day before things are due. You might have quick conferences with individual students to check in midway through the project and again toward the end with the kids who are likely to need additional support. You might assign students peer editors who check in with each other and keep each other up to date. These are all additional layers to prevent kids from falling through. That's the Swiss cheese model. Now, you might be thinking, but Angela, this is what we already do. We're just not calling it that. But here's the difference. In my experience in education, We do most of these things begrudgingly because we know they're not 100% effective. Because we know that an additional support or intervention isn't going to completely fix the problem once and for all for every student, we get frustrated. When we hear a new initiative or an innovative idea, many of us have an immediate urge to think of all the situations in which that approach will not work. We think, well, that's not going to help this kid or that'll never work in my classroom, or good luck making that happen here. My encouragement to you is this. Let go of the all or nothing thinking. Just because something won't fix the problem for everyone in every scenario doesn't mean it has no value. Maybe the solution won't stop X from happening, but it will stop Y. And then maybe another approach will stop Z. And those two things combined will lessen X a little bit especially if you're no longer as worried about Y and Z. What I'm really suggesting to you here is to shift to the Swiss cheese model mindset. Those little things that you're doing to help your students that don't seem to be making a difference for some of them, they are. They're a layer of Swiss cheese. They're one additional barrier between them and failure. One additional covering to keep them from falling through. That open house or back to school night you offered and only a handful of families showed up to, that's another layer of Swiss cheese. It didn't prevent all the kids from falling through. There were holes in that solution. But you put it on top of emails and conferences and other layers of things that you offer to keep families informed, you have a much stronger barrier now to hold these families up. In the way that I envision the Swiss cheese model in education, It ultimately doesn't matter whether the layer you put down catches everyone. It's unrealistic to expect it to, and it doesn't have to. Just keep layering more solutions down. And keep in mind, this does not mean endless layers forever. There is such a thing as too much cheese, right? So many layers, it's this solid brick that's too much to swallow. You don't need to do it all. I'm just saying, don't do one thing and then get frustrated because it didn't work for everybody. Think in terms of multiple smaller solutions rather than finding that one big perfect thing that fixes it all forever. And maybe on another scale, you could also think of yourself 
as one layer of Swiss cheese, this one barrier between your students and failure. You're not perfect. There's holes in your approach. You can't be the complete covering that every student needs. But it's not your job to be the entire brick of cheese. You are one slice. The kids' family members, other teachers, community members, coaches, and so on, all of these people provide another layer of protection to hold that student up. It's not all on you. And so your takeaway truth for the week ahead is this. Be willing to tackle hard problems with layers of imperfect solutions rather than giving up on doing anything altogether. We need folks who are willing to fight for what's right for this next generation. And that's you. Let's solve the bigger problems in our country and our world together, one small, imperfect layer of support at a time. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be worth it.